Question 1. Which of the following will the nurse in the care plan for a client hospitalized with viral hepatitis? A. Increase fluid intake to 2,500 milliliters per day B. Adequate bed rest C. Bland diet D. Administer antibiotics as ordered. Answer 1. B. Treatment of hepatitis consists of bed rest during the acute phase to reduce metabolic demands on the liver, thus increasing blood supply and cell regeneration. Institute bed or chair rest during the toxic state. Provide a quiet environment, limit visitors as needed, promotes rest and relaxation. Available energy is used for healing. Question 2. The nurse is performing colostomy irrigation on a male client. During the irrigation, the client begins to complain of abdominal cramps. What is the appropriate nursing action? A. Notify the physician B. Notify the charge nurse C. Stop the irrigation temporarily D. Medicate for pain and resume the irrigation. Answer 2. See if cramping occurs during colostomy irrigation, the irrigation flow is stopped temporarily and the client is allowed to rest. Cramping may occur from an infusion that is too rapid or is causing too much pressure. Have the colostomy patient sit on or near the toilet for about 15 to 2 minutes so the initial colostomy returns can drain into the toilet. If the patient is on bed rest, allow the colostomy to drain into the bedpan. Question 3. Backflow of gastric contents into the esophagus as a result of relaxation or incompetence of the lower esophageal or cardiac sphincter is called? A. Hypertrophic pyloric stenosis B. Pyloromyotomy C. Celiac disease D. Gastroesophageal reflux disease Answer 3. D. Gastroesophageal reflux disease is a digestive disorder that occur when acidic stomach juices, food and fluids frequently flows back into the tube connecting your mouth and esophagus. This backwash can irritate the lining of your esophagus. Question 4. The nurse is preparing a discharge teaching plan for the male client who has umbilical hernia repair. What should the nurse include in the plan? A. Avoiding coughing B. Maintaining bed rest C. Restricting pain medication D. Irrigating the drain. Answer 4. A coughing is avoided following umbilical hernia repair to prevent disruption of tissue integrity, which can occur because of the location of this surgical procedure. Splint the stomach by placing a pillow over the abdomen with firm pressure before coughing or movement to help reduce the pain. Question 5. Sherry is a client with jaundice who is experiencing pruritus. Which nursing intervention would be included in the care plan for the client? A. Administer pain medication B. Keep the fingernails short and smooth C. Apply cold pressure when bathing D. Decreasing the client dietary protein and fat intake. Answer 5. B. The client with pruritus experiences itching, which may lead to skin breakdown and possibly infection from scratching. Keeping his fingernails short and smooth help to prevent skin breakdown and infection from scratching. Encourage the patient to adopt healthy skin care routine to decrease skin irritation. Question 6. When teaching a client about pancreatic function, the nurse understand that pancreatic lipase perform which function? A. Break down fat into fatty acids and glycerol B. Break down protein into dipeptides and amino acids C. Transport fatty acids into the bloodstream D. Contraction of the gallbladder. Answer 6. A lipase hydrolyze or break down fat into fatty acids and glycerol. Lipase is an enzyme that breaks down triglycerides into free fatty acids and glycerol. Lipases are present in pancreatic secretions and are responsible for fat digestion. 
Question 7, in a client with diarrhea, which outcome indicates that fluid resuscitation is successful? A. The client reported decrease in stool frequently B. The client paces formed stools at regular intervals. C. The client exhibits firm skin turgor. D. The client no longer experiences abdominal pain. Answer 7, C. A client with diarrhea has a nursing diagnosis of deficient fluid volume related to excessive fluid loss in the stool. Expected outcomes includes firm skin turgor, moist mucous membranes, and urine output of at least 30 ml per hour. Evaluate dehydration by observing skin turgor over the sternum and inspecting for longitudinal furrows of the tongue. Question 8 a nurse is monitoring a client for the early signs of dumping syndrome, which symptoms indicated this occurrence? A. Abdominal pain B. Bradycardia and indigestion C. Sweating and pallor D. Hypoglycemia Answer 8, C. Early manifestations of dumping syndrome occur 5 to 30 minutes after eating. Symptoms includes vertigo. Dachycardia, syncope, sweating, pallor, palpitation, and the desire to lie down. Late dumping, usually occurs 1 to 3 hours after a meal. Question 9, which goal of the client's care should take priority during the first days of hospitalization for an exacerbation of ulcerative colitis? A. Pain management B. Maintaining adequate nutrition C. Promoting rest and comfort D. Managing diarrhea. Answer 9, D. Diarrhea is the primary symptom in an exacerbation of ulcerative colitis, and decreasing the frequency of stools is the first goal of treatment. Observe and record stool frequent, characteristic, amount, and precipitating factors. Question 10, the nurse evaluates the client's stoma during the initial post-hub period. Which of the following observations should be reported immediately to the physician? A. The stoma is dark red to purple. B. The stoma is slightly edema to C. The stoma does not expel stool D. The stoma is a small amount of blood. Answer 10, A. A dark red to purple stoma indicate inadequate blood supply. Major color changes in a stoma, with the stoma becoming pale or dark, are a sign that the tissue is not receiving the blood supply that it should. Question 11. Which of the following conditions can cause a hiatal hernia? A. Increased intrathoracic pressure B. Weakness of the esophageal muscle C. Increased esophageal muscle pressure D. Weakness of the diaphragmatic muscle. Answer 11, D. A hiatal hernia is caused by weakness of the diaphragmatic muscle and increased intra-abdominal, no intrathoracic pressure. This weakness allows the stomach to slide into the esophagus. Question 12. An infant has just returned to the nursing unit after surgical repair of a cleft lip on the right side. The nurse should place the infant in which best position at this time? A. Prone position B. On the stomach C. Left lateral position D. Right lateral position. Answer 12. C. A cleft lip is a congenital anomaly that occurs as a result of failure of soft tissue or bony structure to fuse during embryonic development. After cleft lip repair, the nurse avoids positioning an infant on the side of the repair or in the prone position because these positions can cause rubbing of the surgical site on the mattress. The nurse positions the infant on the side lateral, to the repair or on the back upright and positions the infant to prevent airway obstruction by secretions, blood, or the tongue. Question 13. A child is hospitalized because of persistent vomiting. 
the nurse should monitor the child closely for which problem? A. Diarrhea B. Metabolic acidosis C. Metabolic alkalosis D. Hyperactive bowel sounds Answer 13, C. Vomiting causes the loss of hydrochloric acid and subsequent metabolic alkalosis. Metabolic acidosis would occur in a child experiencing diarrhea because of the loss of bicarbonate. Diarrhea might or might not accompany vomiting. Hyperactive bowel sounds are not associated with vomiting. Question 14. Which of the following measures should the nurse focus on for the client with esophageal versus A. Teaching about the disease condition B. Encouraging nutritional intake C. Controlling blood pressure D. Recognizing hemorrhage Answer 14, D. Recognizing the rupture of esophageal versus or hemorrhage is the focus of nursing care because the client could succumb to this quickly. Nursing management is aimed at assisting the physician in controlling bleeding and preventing shock and death. Question 15. The nurse checks the stool of a patient with a new sigmoid colostomy. The stool is deemed normal if it is A. Watery B. Semicillin C. Form D. Semi-liquid. Answer 15. C. The sigmoid colon is situated in the bottom part of the large intestine. There the stool produced in the sigmoid colon is formed or solid. A colostomy installed in this area should also produce formed stool, as compared to their colostomies in different sections of the colon. Question 16. The nurse starts to perform a focused assessment of the abdominal region with which of the following sequence is correct? A. Palpation, percussion, observation, osculation B. Observation, percussion, palpation, osculation C. Percussion, palpation, osculation, observation D. Observation, osculation, percussion, palpation Answer 16, D. Abdominal assessments start with inspection and observation first prior to any other assessment method. Next, osculate the abdomen for bowel sound, percussion and palpation follow and should be done quadrant by quadrant, ideally on a clockwise order. Question 17, a 22 years old female patient is admitted with hepatitis B. The nurse informs the patient that she will be under which of the following types of illoation? A. Universal precaution B. Enteric isolation C. Strict isolation D. Contact precaution Answer 17, D. Hepatitis B can be contracted through blood and blood products, as well as needle prick injuries and body secretions. Patients with hepatitis B should be nursed using universal precautions such as wearing appropriate personal protective equipment. Question 18. A 70 years old male patient comes into the emergency room with acute upper gastrointestinal hemorrhage. The first nursing actions to be performed should be to A. Treat shock B. Insert an azogastric tube C. Treat hypervolemia D. Control the bleeding source. Answer 18, C. The patient with acute upper gastrointestinal hemorrhage is at high risk for severe deficient fluid volume or hypovolemia due to blood loss. If left untreated, hypovolemia can result to shock, therefore, the immediate nursing actions must have a goal to treat hypovolemia. Question 19. The nurse is preparing to care for a child with a diagnosis of intussusception. The nurse reviews the child's record and expects to note which sign of this disorder documented. A. Watery diarrhea B. 
Ribbon-like stools C. Profuse projectile vomiting D. Bright red blood and mucus in the stools. Answer 19, D. Intussusception is a telescoping of one portion of the bowel into another. The condition results in an obstruction to the passage of intestinal contents. A child with intussusception typically has severe abdominal pain that is grumpy and intermittent, causing the child to draw in the knees to the chest. Vomiting may be present, but is not projectile. Bright red blood and mucus are passed through the rectum and commonly are described as current jelly-like stools. Watery diarrhea and ribbon-like stools are not manifestations of this disorder. Question 20. The nurse admits a child to the hospital with a diagnosis of pyloric stenosis. On assessment, which data would the nurse expect to obtain when asking the parent about the child's symptoms? 1. Watery diarrhea 2. Projectile vomiting 3. Increased urine output 4. Vomiting large amounts of bile. Answer 20b. In pyloric stenosis, hypertrophy of the circular muscles of the pylorus causes narrowing of the pyloric canal between the stomach and the duodenum. Clinical manifestations of pyloric stenosis include projectile vomiting, irritability, hunger and crying, constipation, and signs of dehydration, including a decrease in urine output, 